Imagine you're working a busy shift in the emergency department. You're treating an 86-year-old female with septic shock due to pneumonia. Straightforward treatment, right? You give her 30 cc's per kg of IV fluids, broad spectrum antibiotics, but she's still 80s over 50s. What do you do now? Well, most people would start vasopressors such as norepinephrine. All right, you start the norepinephrine and her blood pressure doesn't change at all. So you increase the norepinephrine dose. Now her blood pressure is 69 over 38. What just happened? Why would a septic patient get worse on vasopressors? And what do you do now? Let's talk about the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, or LVOTO. LVOTO is an under-recognized and seldom discussed condition. It is classically described in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but in the emergency department or ICU, LVOTO will most commonly occur in septic shock. First off, let's define the LVOT, or left ventricular outflow tract. There are no specific structures which can be used to explain where the LV chamber ends and the LVOT begins, but assume it's in the area that lies in front of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. It's the tube in which blood is ejected from the LV cavity. What is actually happening in a left ventricular outflow tract obstruction? Let's look at the LVOT. In systole, as shown here, the mitral valve should be closed. When the space between the septum and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is too close, or the blood flow is too fast, the pressure drops due to the venturi effect, and subsequently the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve gets sucked into the LVOT during systole, which causes two problems, as shown by the red arrows. Number one, it obstructs the ejection of blood into the aorta, and two, it increases mitral regurgitation. Both lead to decreased cardiac output. This is a dynamic condition which does not respond to your typical hemodynamic interventions such as inotropes. In fact, the obstruction will worsen with norepinephrine. Here is a still image of an echo during systole with LVOTO. You'll notice the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is touching the septum. Here is an animation of an LVOTO throughout the cardiac cycle. This abnormal movement of the mitral valve is called SAM, or systolic anterior motion of the anterior mitral leaflet, leading to this LVOTO. SAM is caused by the Venturi effect, or Bernoulli principle. The narrow section of the LVOT has higher velocity and lower pressure. Therefore, anything that further lowers the pressure in the LVOT will worsen the obstruction due to the suction effect leading to SAM such as the narrowing of the LVOT size or speeding up of blood flow. Which three situations lead to this condition? LVOT obstruction is most commonly provoked by three things. Number one, hypovolemia. A smaller ventricle and smaller LVOT causes higher velocity blood flow and more SAM. Number two, tachycardia. There's not as much diastolic filling of the left ventricle, leading to a smaller LVOT as well. And number three, inotropes. Increased contractility and therefore increased speed of blood leads to more SAM. One study showed that 2% of septic shock patients had LVOT obstruction on echo. Why are we seeing this more now and why is it being discussed more? Well, in sepsis, recently there's been a greater emphasis on less IV fluids and more and earlier norepinephrine. This combination may trigger a LVOT obstruction in susceptible patients. What are the echo findings? Well, you need to obtain an apical 5-chamber or apical 3-chamber view and place your continuous wave Doppler through the LVOT and aortic valve, as seen here. This is an example of a left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Look at the shape of the blood flow leaving the left ventricle. Notice how initially the velocity slowly increases, then suddenly the velocity abruptly increases. As the LVOT narrows, the obstruction worsens and creates a spiral of lower pressure, more suction of the mitral valve, more SAM, increased velocity of the blood, and more obstruction until ultimately blood flow stops. This late peaking envelope is characteristic finding in LVOTO. This shape is often referred to as the dagger appearance. And look at the peak velocity. It's 5.3 meters per second. This is very fast blood flow. Normally, the velocity is about one meter per second here. In an LVOTO, anything over 2.7 meters per second is considered abnormal, and the higher the velocity, the worse the obstruction. Here's another example of an LVOT obstruction. Notice the dagger-shaped appearance through the LVOT. The peak velocity is still 5.3 meters per second here, which is a severe obstruction. Here's another example. Notice the dagger-shaped appearance of the Doppler tracing. Again, 
the peak velocity here is 5.1 meters per second. Here is the last example with the dagger shaped Doppler appearance. The peak velocity here is 4.7 meters per second, again, a severe obstruction. Compare the dagger shaped appearance of the LVOT obstruction to aortic stenosis as seen here. Notice that both of the conditions have a very fast velocity, but the aortic stenosis has a parabolic shape, not a dagger shape. This is because aortic stenosis is a fixed obstruction rather than a dynamic obstruction. So there's not a sudden acceleration of blood flow due to the Venturi effect leading to systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve. Here's another echocardiographic finding of LVOT obstruction. Sometimes you'll actually see the SAM indicating contact of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve with the septum in systole, but it's harder to see than you expect. Remember, since there is SAM occurring, the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve doesn't join together properly or coapt with the posterior leaflet of the mitral valve, which causes mitral regurgitation as seen on the right. Here are two clips of SAM. Can you see it in the apical three chamber view? Let's slow the clip down to half speed. How about now? Can you see the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve touch the septum during systole? Let's move to the apical four chamber view. This can be a little difficult, so let's slow this video down. Still, there's the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve touching the septum, leading to LVOTO. In order to develop a left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, you must have both a predisposing anatomical factor and a condition that induces the LVOTO. In the ED and ICU, a common predisposing anatomical factor is basal septal hypertrophy. Rates of basal septal hypertrophy dramatically increase over the age of 60. There is only a 0.1 prevalence under the age of 60 and 18% prevalence over the age of 85. But what is basal septal hypertrophy? Well, there's a lack of consensus on nomenclature, but it's also called sigmoid septum, septal bulge, or septal knuckle. They all mean the same thing. It's an asymmetric localized thickening of the basal interventricular septum and a marker of remodeling in patients with hypertension. Here's the appearance of this on echo. This is septal hypertrophy that has been associated with exertional LVOT obstruction and unexplained exertional dyspnea that responds to beta blockers. But trying to predict who will develop an LVOTO is largely unpredictable due to the complex interplay between the shape of the heart, preload, afterload, heart rate, and many other factors. Here are some more examples of basal septal hypertrophy in the parasternal long axis view, apical four chamber, and apical three chamber. You'll notice a septal bulge is marked in red, which I feel is most prominent in the parasternal long axis view. I want to mention four distinct clinical presentations of an LVOT obstruction. Number one, septic shock in an elderly woman, especially when getting worse on pressors. Remember, 2% of septic shock patients will have an LVOT obstruction. Consider this diagnosis when you hear the term vasopressor refractory shock. Number two, cardiogenic shock, especially in the setting of an anterior MI that is getting worse with diuretics as well as norepi and dobutamine. Number three, Takasubo cardiomyopathy with hypotension. Approximately 25% of Takasubo cardiomyopathy will have an LVOT obstruction. Why is that? Apical hypokinesis causes an abnormal septal angle, which combined with the basal hyperkinesis causes the LVOT obstruction. And number four, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy plus any illness. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy occurs in one in 500 people, and about 60% of the people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will have some form of obstruction at baseline. So any critical illness could push them into obstruction. Let's review the three steps to make the diagnosis of LVOT obstruction. First, in the parasternal long axis view, recognize the 2D echocardiographic features associated with the LVOT obstruction, such as basal septal hypertrophy in the elderly, Takasubo cardiomyopathy with basal hyperkinesis, and a thick septum in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Number two, in the parasternal long axis view, do you see SAM? Does the mitral valve touch the septum in systole? You can use M mode to help identify this SAM. And number three, and the most important, in the apical five chamber or apical three chamber view, use continuous wave Doppler through the LVOT and find a dagger shaped appearance of the blood flow with a velocity greater than 2.7 meters per second. Now that you've diagnosed an LVOT obstruction, how do you treat it? 
will first off stop the inotropic meds such as norepinephrine. Next, I use the mnemonic of the two Fs, fluids and phenylephrine. I know that phenylephrine starts with a P, but I needed it to work for this mnemonic. Why do these two interventions work? Well, anything that increases the LV volume and therefore increases the separation of the septum and the mitral valve will improve the situation. So if the patient is hypovolemic, fluids will increase the LV volume and therefore the separation between the septum and the mitral valve. Why is phenylephrine a perfect fit? Well, since it's a pure alpha agonist, it increases blood pressure by increasing vascular tone, but it does not increase inotropy. Remember that increasing inotropy causes an increase in the speed of blood, leading to more SAM. Phenylephrine also causes a reflex bradycardia, which again will help with the LVOT obstruction physiology since slowing the heart rate will improve diastolic filling of the LV, which leads to more separation of the septum and the mitral valve. I will note that vasopressin is okay in cetophenylephrine, but it's not as well researched. And finally, consider adding esmolol. It makes sense physiologically by reducing the heart rate and reducing inotropy, but since most of these patients are critically ill, I'd only consider this intervention if you're very confident in the diagnosis and titrate the medication slowly. So going back to our four clinical presentations of LVOT obstruction, in the first case, you'll want to give more IV fluids, you'll want to stop the norepinephrine and start phenylephrine or vasopressin. In the second case, you'll want to stop diuresis, stop inotropes such as norepi, epi, and dobutamine, and consider giving gentle IV fluid boluses, which is very counterintuitive for a patient that is in cardiogenic shock, and you'll want to avoid an intraaortic balloon pump. In the third case, you'll give gentle fluids and phenylephrine. Personally, I would not start esmolol unless the above treatments were not working and the patient had an LVOT peak velocity greater than 3.5 meters per second, which is severe obstruction. And finally, in the patient with hokum and is now in shock, there is an extremely high likelihood there is an LVOT obstruction occurring, but the treatment is still the two Fs, as I mentioned in the last slide. All of these cases, if you improve the LVOT obstruction, your hemodynamics, such as blood pressure, should improve, but I recommend that you repeat the echo to ensure the LVOT continuous wave Doppler is normalizing, meaning that the peak velocity will decrease and the dagger appearance will resolve, indicating less dynamic obstruction. You may also check for resolution of the MR jet in the left atrium. This has been my longest and most detailed advanced cardiac echo video to date. Please let me know if the video is too long in the comments section or just post any questions you have. I really appreciate you watching the video and if you liked it, please share with your colleagues.